Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is Physics Chapter 4, Two-Dimensional Motion Force, Video 5. Today's topic is horizontally launched projectile. The objectives are to know that initial vertical velocity is 0 meters per second when a projectile is launched horizontally. To understand that horizontal and vertical components are independent of each other, and to understand that project, a pro projectile problems must be treated as two separate horizontal and vertical problems, be able to solve problems involving horizontal projectile. Horizontal projectile, that means VIX equals VI and VIY equals zero. So a projectile that's launched horizontally from an elevated position that follows a parabolic path to the ground. So horizontally launched projectile equals to free fall from rest plus the motion in the horizontal direction with constant velocity, these two add together will give you a parabolic path. A projectile looks like that. So it's a vertical motion, it's a free fall from rest. That means VIY equals a zero. AY is negative G, and so VY equals negative G times T, and DY equals negative one half GT squared. In the horizontal direction, it moves with constant velocity. That means AX equals to zero. Velocity in the horizontal direction is constant, equals to initial velocity. And DX equals to VIX times T is the same as VI times T. Here is one strategy. Since both horizontal and vertical direction have the same time, so we can find the time in one dimension, then bring it over to the other dimension to find unknown variables. Actually, we use the same strategy in the um, projectile launched at angle. So objects launched from the same height will hit the ground at the same time, regardless of the horizontal speed. This is because horizontal components and vertical components are independent of each other. Take a look at three uh, horizontally launched projectiles. They have the same height, they have the same vertical acceleration, they have the same vertical initial velocity, the difference is they have the different horizontal speed, but for all three projectiles, they will land at the same time because they have the same dy, they have the same g, that's why they have the same time. Take a look at this example. A pool, a ball leaves a 0.6, 0, 0 meter high table with an initial horizontal velocity of 2.4 meters per second. A. Uh, determine the time required for the pool ball to fall to the ground, and two, determine the horizontal distance between the table's edge and the ball's landing location. So first, you make a chart, and then you write down what is given to you. 2.4, that's horizontal speed. Horizontal speed is constant. Horizontal acceleration equals to zero. Since the ball is launched horizontally, so its initial vertical speed equals to zero, uh, vertical acceleration is negative 9.81, and you'll have a negative 0 0.60 meter high table because it's falling downward. So from the vertical direction, we can find the time. So some of you probably say, wait a second, I know more in the horizontal direction. Why do I need to use vertical direction? Horizontal, even though there's more blanks filled, doesn't mean you know more because Horizontal velocity is constant. As a matter of fact, you only know two things. Horizontal velocity is constant. Acceleration equals zero. As a matter of fact, it's only one thing. You don't know anything else. You can use horizontal uh, dimensions to figure out the time or distance. But in the vertical, you know three. Those are different quantities. That's why you can use vertical. You know vertical y. You know vertical iy. You know ay. So the only thing you don't know is t. That's how you can find t. Since viy equals to zero, so y equals to negative one half g t squared because ay equals negative g. From here, we can find the time equals two y divided by negative g. Substitute a number with units. You can get time equals to 0.35 seconds. Now, to find horizontal distance, we can use horizontal dimensions. Since we know the time, we know the average speed. Acceleration equals to zero, so we can find Horizontal distance, since ay equals to zero, so this equation simplified to x equals to vix times t. So x equals to 0.84 meters. So that's the question one. Question two, 
A soccer ball is kicked horizontally off a 22-meter high hill. So we know y equals negative 22 because the soccer ball is falling downward. Length a distance of 35 meters from the edge of the hill. This distance is horizontal distance, 35. So let's see what else do we know. Initial vertical velocity equals to zero because the ball is kicked horizontally, horizontal projectile. We also know acceleration in x direction equals to zero. Acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.81. Determine the time. Again, we use y dimension to find the time. Simplify this equation since vi y equals to zero, so y equals to negative one half gt squared. To find the time equals to 2.12. Once you have the time, you can find horizontal velocity using this equation since ax equals to zero, so vix. Initial horizontal velocity is 16.5, so it's final, so it's average because the velocity is constant in the horizontal direction. Another example. So here's the path of a stunt car driven horizontally off a cliff is represented, represented in the diagram to the right. After leaving the cliff, the car falls freely to A to point A in 0.5 seconds to point B in 1.0 seconds. Determine the magnitude of horizontal component of velocity of the car at B. As a matter of fact, you can determine at A or B because horizontal uh, velocity is constant. Next one, determine the magnitude of vertical velocity of the car at B. B, okay, right over here, determine the magnitude of vertical displacement dy from A to B. Since there are two points, so I'm going to have two charts, one for point A, the other one for point B. So the difference is the time at A is 0.5 seconds, time at B is 1 second. Another thing that's different is the distance. Horizontal distance at A is 8 meters, horizontal distance at B is 60 meters. So write down what do you know. Next one, determine the magnitude of horizontal component of velocity at B. At B, the distance is 16, time is 1, A equals to 0, so we can use that equation. Substitute variables at B, you'll have 16 meters per second. As a matter of fact, at A should also be 16 meters per second because both at A and B should be the same. Horizontal velocity is constant. Next question, determine the magnitude of vertical velocity at B. So for vertical velocity, we can use this, uh, oh, sorry, vertical velocity at point A, so vertical velocity at point A is VIY plus AY times T at A. So we have negative 4.9 meters per second. So uh, as a matter of fact, the magnitude is just 4.9 meters per second. This negative is the direction uh, downward. So this is the magnitude is just 4.9 meters per second. Next one, calculate the magnitude of vertical displacement dy from A to B. So we can use this equation. From A to B is VIY is really VIY is negative 4.9. That's a velocity at A times T from A to B, which is 0.5 seconds. Plus one half acceleration is negative 9.81 times the time again. So you'll have negative 3.7 meters. So the magnitude is just 3.7. Direction negative means downward. Okay, another question. A projectile is launched horizontally at a speed 30 meters per second from a platform located a vertical distance h above the ground. The projectile strikes the ground at a time t at a horizontal distance d on the platform. On the diagram, sketch a theoretical path of the projectile. So this is supposed to be a parabolic path. Next one, calculate a horizontal distance d if the projectile's total time is 2.5 seconds. So make a chart. Horizontal, we know initial is 30, vertical is 0. We know acceleration equals to zero. We know the time is 2.5. So D equals to VIX times T. 30 times 2.5 give you 75 meters. So that's the answer to question B. C is a little complicated because it doesn't really uh, express with a number. 
your you'll have to express your answer in terms of symbol. Express the projectile's total time flight t in terms of vertical distance h and acceleration g. So let's write down what's given in terms of h and g. h the distance in y is negative h because you're falling downward, and acceleration is negative g. So you're trying to find t. So here is the equation. Substitute v i y is still zero so you'll have negative g for y this part is zero a y equals a negative g so from here you solve t equals 2h over g that's it that's it for today thanks for watching see you next time